Welcome aboard folks and welcome back to my regular viewers. My name is Rod and in today's video I will be talking about the stand that I uh, purchased and the mods I made uh, to make the honeycomb aeronautical control column and uh, throttle quadrant attach successfully so that I can have a mobile stand for my flight simulator controls and uh, not have to do any alterations to my desk. I'll give you the details. All right, so all in all, it's been, uh, you know, one challenge after the other, which is exciting, but then again, you do run into a lot of challenges. Um, so I wanted to acquire something that was really good as far as control columns are concerned, and not so expensive that it would break the bank and not so cheap that you couldn't do anything with it. So this is kind of where I ended up, right? Uh, then once I, I, I purchased it, I was very concerned about attaching it to my desk. My desk is uh, relatively thick, so about yay big. You got a measuring tape here. Uh, and... All right, so six and a half inches of the drawer with the top table of the desk. Obviously, the clamps on anything would be too small for that size. And with removing the, the drawers, the uh, table itself is right at two inches. And it did fit but I was risking breaking the clamp and the table stand um, that goes beneath the control column as I was installing it, number one. Number two, it was a monster task. So odds are very high. I was just simply not going to be removing it. And then that creates a huge problem because this is my area of work and I need to be uh, flexible with, with my area of work. So that wasn't gonna work. Luckily, I uh, did at the same time that I made the purchase of this, just in case, I purchased this stand, and I don't wanna lie to you. Yeah, I wanted to double check. It is just the Wheel Stand Pro. Uh, that's the name of it, that's the brand. They make many different stands and they are impressively robust. They're very strong and sturdy, which they have to be. So I weighed this setup and the stand with the control column and the, and the uh, rudder pedals is weighing in at 42 pounds. So not light. If it's something that's not sturdy or strong enough, it will not work, right? It's just gonna be flimsy and then uh, you're going to risk breaking your very expensive controls, which you don't want to do. All right. So let me show you um, a little bit of the technical hurdles I had to overcome. Okay. The yoke itself. Um, I didn't find this anywhere I look. I might have overlooked. So if I did, just let me know. But through trial and error, I was able to uh, find that the USB port that the, uh, the yoke needs to go into has to be a USB um, 2.0. It is a USB-C at the end of it, but into your computer, my 3.0 port did not work. My 2.0 port did work. Hence the reason uh, I am saying what I'm saying. I am not aware of anything special that would make my computer not work with this 2.0 or 3.0 versus yours. So if it's not working, make sure your USB is a 2.0 version. And then that, that was successful. Uh, it, it did recognize it. If I was in the other port, it would not even recognize it. Uh, to release the control column, there are a little, uh, little, wheels you got to spin back there so you loosen up all the tension once the tension is loose uh you can just slide it forward 
and then it comes off of its uh, table stand. It connects into here, and I'm happy you can see it. Um, overall build quality, as I said in my initial impressions, was fantastic. I do think that the uh, tension cords on the inside are way too light. Um, I would have been much happier with a far more stiff control column activation. Um, I'm not exactly sure why they went with what they went. Forward and back seems rather appropriate, but uh, aileron actuation is definitely very light. And if it had more weight to it, I think it would give it a more uh, consistent uh, feel with the level of product that this is. All the buttons work, which is impressive, and because there are many, and they're all highly useful. So you got your uh, off, your mag selector, and starter uh, on this as a key style. You got your master avionics, and then you got your lights. Uh, trim, camera view angles, autopilot, aileron trim, and uh, another camera view button. Of course, everything is mappable, right? So, uh, and then you also have some uh, light that shines through the uh, honeycomb material here. Repeat the procedure to disconnect the throttle. The throttle quadrant itself, I was looking to see if it was blue, right? Uh, blue is kind of universal 3.0 language uh it is not blue it works in the 3.0 uh i haven't tried in the 2.0 because it works in the 3.0 it may work in the 2.0 unlike the yoke so maybe a future test i'll uh, double check it and see again um very very impressive uh setup overall Everything works, which is magnificent. Um, it came with a commercial levers, so you can go to a uh, dual engine or quad for 747. Airbus, uh, what is it, the 340, yes, uh, that has the four engines. Now, I have not been able to successfully map the four throttle quadrant to work with the Boeing 747. It's glitching. Um, there are bugs. However, I have been able to successfully map the two engine uh, with the uh, speed brake lever actuator in sequential from zero to 100, as well as the flap lever selector uh, from zero all the way to full flaps down, which is labeled as 40, or one, two, three, and full for the Airbus. Just unbelievable. Um, it, it adds an entire dimension of the, the flight simulator that is very consistent and true to life, which is impressive. All these switches over here are mappable to your liking. So whatever you would like to do, uh, make them work. I got them set as uh, things that I have to have on, on the flight, so I'm not mistaking them. Uh, Peter Heat. Uh, fuel pump, hydraulics, and then over here I got parking brake, ground power uh, supply, which I have not tried yet, but it is a, a tall, um, an on switch, and then APU starter. So I got those mapped out, and then over here, I uh, don't think you'll be able to see, you can definitely look it up online, but these are status lights that actually work which is impressive. Um, you know, you get that real airplane feel, right? And then over here is your autopilot control um, interface. You select what you would like to change here. And here you increase or decrease the value. And these are your autopilot mode selectors, which are, uh, it takes just a tiny little bit to get used to. Well, once you're used to it, bada bing, bada boom. It is awesome. Um, all in all, I can, uh, I can tell this will be a very fruitful uh, investment 
I will be able to share with you a lot of real world aviation stuff as well as create lots of courses, which I will be doing on the aircraft individually and uh, very likely on uh, pilots' licenses as well. So look forward to that. Look forward to, uh, to lots of uh, courses and uh, things that you can uh, purchase uh, to help uh, the channel, of course, and so I can continue making this type of content for you um, and a review of these products in uh, greater detail in the future uh, once I've been using them for a long time. Uh, this right here, pretty special for the uh, flight sim environment. It is a trim uh, wheel and you actuate your pitch trim in a very fine tuning uh, way. So the actuation process is uh, a very small change uh, per, per rotation, right? What that means is you can fine tune and fly it really smoothly. Uh, if you do with your thumb only, the airplane tends to kind of, you know, the nose tends to buck a bit. That's just because you're giving it too much trim in a short period of time. This mitigates that and man, it's silky. So really, really nice. Now, I uh, wanted to share that with you because uh, that's just a little bit more about the control columns. The table itself, okay? Um, you, I did record a time-lapse video of it for you to check it out. It ended up being 35 inches long by nine inches wide. And this is a one inch countertop grade cut. So it is very sturdy, beautiful. Uh, you, I could stain it. Uh, I did sand it lightly. Um, I was not gonna stain it, but um, um, you can if you want to. Then the whole thing is just measuring a hundred times, drilling once to mitigate any mistakes. Now. When setting this up, I did uh, do something rather stupid that I'll share with you so you don't go through the trouble and you don't have to do that, uh, that thing I did. So when you would like to attach the, tray, uh, the table, you can just release the clamp from the tube. At first, I might have been a bit eager to uh, disassemble stuff. So I disassembled the, the nut that goes through the hole and it has lock washers in it. And it was extremely difficult to put it back in. So uh, I did do it, which is good. It's back in, it's secure, it's fine. But uh, just a word of caution, don't, don't do that. Just release the clamp, that's, that's much better. Um, I used lock washers uh, just to make sure everything was gonna remain tight and uh, where I could, and then just the little nuts. The screws were anywhere from one and a quarter to one and a half in length, and I, di I did use a machine so I could actually uh, thread the nut on the end. If you do wooden screws, they're not gonna have the, uh, the nuts, and uh, you do need it to, to assemble all of this. So I used machine screws. Number eight, a 32 pitch on the thread, uh, and it'll fit through all of the holes. So there's no issue. So you got a lot of good information right there. Number eight, one and a quarter to one and a half with a 32 pitch on the thread. And then you'll need lots of uh, screws, washers, lock washers, and uh, nuts. Uh, I could as well. not have all of this area, right? I could. However, I was like, you know, it, it may grow in the future. I may put something else over there. So I'll just go ahead and do that. Well, as it turns out, it was a great idea to have this extra area because it's a left-hand mouse pad area to interact with the software, which has come in extremely handy. You know, I could create a little table on the side and have a right-handed uh, mouse pad. I could do that. 
but uh, at the present time, I have not. And this is what I have. I, I could just, you know, extend it off of the base here, make a little table, just thought of that. So I could do that in the future, maybe. Uh, word of caution. When installing the base plates, make sure that they are absolutely flush with uh, the front of your wood. I am about uh, 1 16th. That is uh, not even an eighth, I don't think, of an inch on this one inside a bit. And my throttle quadrant uh, touches it just a bit enough that I can't push it all the way in. It literally is just that much off. And uh, so just be cautious with that when you're installing. That way you uh, get it perfectly fit. Uh, that is the dimensions, the size, the weight, the uh, time-lapsed uh, footage. I hope uh, you, you'll enjoy the build. And if you have any questions about the table and the attachment itself, uh, do let me know. As far as overall height, this is sitting at 26 and a half off the floor. That's the base of it. So, you know, obviously control column is going to be quite a bit higher. Uh, around 31 inches for the uh, for the actual control column and then All right, so for the pedals I Install them. I didn't lock it in place uh, Because my little ones uh, will sometimes uh, fly the airplane a little bit if I have any visitors over that I'd like to show it, they can try it as well. And um, all that they and everybody needs to do is actuate the pedals with a little bit of force deliberately either forward or back and it'll slide. All right. So that is how the stand looks and in the bottom of it that is how that looks and the rudder pedals are uh, you know nothing to it really um, just uh, installed with the hardware that came with the stand and uh, mounted it just so it was not too tight right uh, pretty straightforward with that I do plug it into the USB 2.0. It did recognize it and it works uh, right away. The only setting you have here is uh, increased tension and lowering tension. So you can do that. Overall uh, brake application and rudder actuation has been fine. You do need to tweak all of these control um, column inputs into uh, Flight Simulator. You certainly want to do that, right? You want to uh, take care of um, what an input will translate into uh, from the control column to the simulator, and you will want to map that out to your liking. Essentially, sensitivity and range and dead zone, uh, you'll want to do that. Uh, I highly recommend um, a, a uh, rather large initial deflection representing a small change in the simulator that will allow for a lot of uh, fine um, control inputs which is necessary because you're not physically on board the aircraft so that will allow for you to finally control the aircraft um, and then the final piece of the puzzle is a uh, board that I leave on the floor the reason I have the board uh, the control column is heavier on the right I have carpet, uh, especially for acoustic purposes. I have carpet in the studio. So this board is 35 by 35 by 30. And uh, I do have it. So the, uh, you know, it is a little bit on the wider side and it is deliberately so to the right 
to provide support for the tremendous amount of extra weight I have to the right of the column so that there is no lean or bank of the control column. It stays uh, straight as I'm interacting with the machine. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's how I uh, went about setting up the uh, Honeycomb Aeronautical. Uh, so far, very pleased with the control columns outside of the uh, four engine bug, which I will report to them and, and Microsoft as well, because uh, you're really looking forward to uh, flying that 747. Uh, at this level of seriousness, uh, it, you know, you can make a real live flight out of it and follow a lot of checklists. So that'll be exciting. I I'll bring that video to you for sure in the future. Uh, folks, so that's it. Just a quick video right now. Uh, more videos to come, of course, about um, all things aviation. If there's anything in particular, dire, burning question, make sure to leave down below. Like, subscribe, share, help me out here. And until next time, as always, fly safe. All right, so I just wanted to capture some time lapse of the setup. Uh, the stand will be necessary. The desk does not work. It would make the installing and uninstalling of the uh, control columns impossible. I could do it, but it takes such a long time, I would end up never playing. Um, so in order to be mobile, I got this uh, stand and uh, just through Amazon. Uh, Wheel Stand Pro is the name of it. Uh, so I'll be doing a time lapse of the setup so you guys can just uh, watch it go down.